It's estimated that 50% of women over 50 will break a bone due to osteoporosis. And I don't know about you, but I think that's a shocking statistic. And here's another stat for you. 39% of people over the age of two in the US don't eat enough calcium. And we know that calcium is vital for bone health. So in this video, I'm gonna give you an overview of calcium, what it is, where it's stored, what it does and how much we need, together with what happens if we don't get enough. I'll then run through 10 of the most calcium rich foods and how I incorporate them into my diet to make sure I meet my daily targets. And if we've not met, hi, I'm Ruth and I'm a health coach. I make videos about healthy habits for over 50s women. And if you're returning, thank you. As ever, this video is for entertainment and information. It's not medical advice because health is personal and context matters. So if you've got a particular concern about your bone health, then please see your GP or family doctor. So calcium, it's a metal iron and it's the most abundant element in the human body. We contain about 1 to 1.2 kilograms of the stuff and 99% of it lives in our bones. So as well as contributing to the strength of our bones and our teeth, it's also really important in cell signaling, particularly in the conduction of electrical impulses through our nerves and muscle contractions. It's also involved in blood clotting. In fact, calcium is so critical to cell biology, blood and tissue levels are maintained at the expense of bone. So if you're not getting enough calcium in your diet, your body wants to hang on to the calcium in your blood and soft tissues to prevent low calcium, something called hypocalcemia, because that's not very good for your nerve cells. And it will literally suck the calcium out of your bones to prevent it. And that's why you can't diagnose osteoporosis from a blood test, because your body works hard to keep the calcium in your blood in a very narrow range. Instead, you need a way of looking at the bones like a DEXA scan. And it's why it's critical that we do eat enough calcium to prevent osteoporosis. So osteoporosis, well, that's the health condition that weakens bones and makes them more susceptible to fracturing. And when they're a little bit weak, but not quite weak enough to be called osteoporosis, well, that's called osteopenia. Now, as a radiologist, I've seen severely osteoporotic bones fracture with minimum force. So rib fractures from coughing or sneezing or turning over in bed. And I wish I was being dramatic for the views, but I'm not. Now, one of the biggest concerns with osteoporosis is when it occurs in the spine, causing weakening and compression fractures of the vertebral bodies, which leads to a loss of height and a stooped posture because it causes pain and it causes a reduction in mobility. And this is the problem with fractures in the elderly. They have a significant morbidity and mortality. So that's the medical term basically for disability and death. And for an elderly person falling and breaking a hip, well, that can genuinely be life ending if they never get their independence back. And in the UK, fractures are the fourth biggest cause of disability and death. Now in adolescence, when we're going through those growth spurts, that's when calcium really accumulates within the bones at a rapid rate. And then once we hit 50, well, it reverses and we start to gradually lose calcium from the bones. And this is where calcium in the diet comes into play because it slows down this rate of decline. And I'm really sorry if this all sounds very doom and gloom, I'm just giving you the facts. But in a nutshell, the answer is eat your calcium. Now the recommended intake, that varies between countries. In the UK, over 50, they say 700 milligrams. In the EU, it's 950. And in the US, for men and women over 51, it's 1,000 milligrams for men and 1,200 milligrams for women. And this is because different advisory committees, they come to different conclusions based on the evidence. And while this number is lower in the UK, well, in 2023, the British Menopause Society released a document. It was a consensus document about the treatment and prevention of osteoporosis in postmenopausal women. And they recommended 1,000 milligrams of calcium a day plus 1,000 international units of vitamin D, which is 25 micrograms. It's also really easy to remember because it's 1,000 and 1,000. Now, the safe upper limit is somewhere between 2,000 and two and a half thousand milligrams depending on the country and that is a lot of milk so quite hard to do and with vitamin d it's hard for us in the northern climates to get enough from the sunlight which is why most governments recommend a supplement in the winter at least if not all year round so check your country's guidance but this video is all about calcium so let's get on with that and head down to my kitchen 
And if you want to find out more about osteoporosis, I'll put a link to the Royal Osteoporosis Society below. They've got a really helpful website. I'll also link to two online calcium calculators so you can see if you're getting enough in your diet. Now we've come down to the kitchen because it's a lot easier to do a show and tell. And sadly, I do not have one of those spotlessly glamorous influencer kitchens. I'm stood in the place with the best light, like in between the dining room table and my Peloton. So I'm gonna run through some of the foods that are highest in calcium and how I incorporate them on a daily basis. And I'll insert some cutaways here of foods which I've been eating over the last two days. So for each food, I'm gonna tell you how many milligrams of calcium it contains per 100 grams of food. So this isn't by portion size, and just remember 100 grams of some seeds or some vegetables is gonna be quite a lot. It just makes comparison easier. And I've taken all the numbers either from this book, uh, which is the Comparison of Foods by Public Health England, or off the US Department of Agriculture website. And that also gives the information per 100 grams. So I'm afraid on this occasion, I've not translated grams into ounces because it would just make things a bit more confusing. And where I've calculated how much calcium is in my meals, well, I've used the free version of the Chronometer app. So the obvious first place to start is dairy. And I'm old enough that I remember the free milk we got at primary school in the 70s. So semi-skimmed or 2% milk, that's got around 120 milligrams per 100 grams, which is about 100 mils of milk. So yes, the milk you put in your tea and coffee, that counts as well. And you can also use milk to make breakfast if, like me, you are a fan of oats, be they in porridge or otherwise known as oatmeal, a low sugar granola or overnight oats. Now, oats themselves, they contain about 46 milligrams per 100 grams, but they're also a medium glycemic index food. So some people, myself included, find themselves getting a little bit peckish by lunchtime if they've had an oat-based breakfast. So I like to pimp up my oats with some extra protein and fiber so I don't get hungry. Now, my favorite add-ons are extra seeds, nuts, and Greek yogurt. And Greek yogurt, well, that's got a lot of calcium in it as well. That's about 126 milligrams per 100 grams. So my breakfast two days ago, well, it was 150 grams of yogurt, and I had that with some berries and some low sugar granola. I've currently got this one on the go uh, from the Paleo Foods Company. I don't do the paleo diet. I just really like this. It doesn't have oats in it, but it does have lots of nuts and seeds and lots of coconut, and I really like coconut. I normally try to make my own granola, but this week, unfortunately, life has just got in the way but I did give it a little bit of a boost with some extra hemp seed hearts and pumpkin seeds for a little bit more fiber and a little bit more protein. Now in my morning coffee, I prefer soya milk to dairy milk. I just prefer the taste. And a lot of uh, plant milks are fortified with calcium. And this one has got about 120 grams per 100 mils. So my breakfast on day one contained about 499 milligrams of calcium. And if you're dairy free, you can get calcium fortified soya yogurt as well. So on day two, I wanted some oatmeal. The weather was a bit grim. It felt a bit cold for so-called English summer. And I added to that a tablespoon each of flaxseed, hemp seed hearts, and chia seeds. I made it with some almond milk, a little bit of cinnamon, and I ate it with yet yeah, more berries, more Greek yogurt, a few chopped walnuts, and a drizzle of maple syrup, the proper stuff. Now, chia seeds, they've got a lot of calcium in them, about 595 milligrams per 100 grams. Just remember that 100 grams of chia seeds is a hell of a lot of chia seeds. And flax seed, well, they've got 230 milligrams per 100 grams. Now, the almond milk that went into my oatmeal, well, that wasn't fortified, but adding all those seeds, the yogurt and the soya milk in my coffee, and again, I got about 500 milligrams of calcium from that breakfast. Now, another breakfast dish I enjoy making and indeed eating is my high protein pancakes, which are made with cottage cheese. And that's another great source of both protein and calcium. And if you want the recipe for these, along with the recipe for a rather decent chia pudding and some homemade granola, I've made a recipe booklet including 10 breakfast recipes. It's on my website, I'll put a link below and I'll put a link on the screen as well. If you want to tick the box when you download it, you'll get my newsletter in your inbox every Friday as well. Now moving on to lunch, I've got a Colombian friend who says, you English, you're just obsessed with toast. And indeed she's correct, we are. Now I get my bread from a local bakery, so shout out to Beaver Bakery. It's a wholemeal loaf with added seeds. Now 100 grams of bread, 
contains about 105 milligrams of calcium, i.e. a thick slice is about 65 grams because, yeah, I did weigh it. Now, on day one, I paired it with some mackerel fillets and tomato sauce, which I really like. And as I've said before, just make sure you get the ones without added sugar. Now, these have got multiple benefits because they contain a lot of protein. They contain calcium from all of those tiny bones. And they've also got omega-3 fatty acids in as well. And if you needed yet more reason to try them, they're, they're pretty cheap. And so this lunch contained about 394 milligrams of calcium. So yesterday I had scrambled eggs on my toast instead. Now about 100 grams of egg is equivalent to two large eggs without their shell. And that's about 46 milligrams of calcium. Now I had some spinach with my eggs as well because I really like spinach. And I keep mine in the freezer basically because I've always got some to hand. Now spinach on paper should be a really good source of calcium. It's got 170 milligrams per 100 grams, but in reality it's not because we don't absorb that much of it because spinach contains something called oxalates. Now oxalates or oxalic acid is a compound found in some green vegetables, nuts and seeds, and it binds to calcium and stops it being absorbed in the gut. Now for me, this isn't really an issue because I don't need to be on a low oxalate diet. I also really like spinach and it's a good source of potassium, magnesium and iron as well. That meal contained 115 milligrams of calcium. So I thought I'd just run through a few snack ideas for you know, grabbing food on the go. And this is a really good option. So this is some dried apricots and some almonds. Dried apricots, they're about 73 milligrams of calcium. Figs, dried figs are even better at 230, but I'm not so keen on those. Now almonds, they top the nut chart with around 240 milligrams of calcium per 100 grams. And Brazil nuts and hazelnuts are pretty good as well. And if you ever want to spot a health coach or nutrition student out in the wild, look for the tiny Tupperware box with nutritious snacks in it, because it means you don't ever get caught hungry when you're, you know, on the go. Now on day two, I went to the gym and when I got back, I was really peckish. So I made myself a protein shake with a little bit of milk and a couple of tablespoons of protein powder. Now I try and get most of my protein through whole foods and generally I'm not a fan of the commercial protein powders because I personally just don't like the taste of artificial sweetener. And there is a little evidence that says artificial sweeteners and emulsifiers might be detrimental to your gut microbiome. But I do like one from the organic protein company. I'm not being sponsored. It's their chocolate one and it does have a little bit of added sugar in it in the form of coconut sugar. And yep, coconut sugar is still sugar but they do also make an unflavored and unsweetened version. So that little snackette, well, that earned me 268 milligrams of calcium. Now for dinner on day one, we had some marinated tofu and tofu often contains some calcium. It's added as a firming agent. And this one I used, that was 420 milligrams per 100 grams. And we had that with some veggies, some edamame noodles and some crispy kale. Now I really like edamame noodles, uh, edamame beans, again, a good source of calcium and protein and fiber so they're more nutritious than rice noodles and they don't go soggy and I prefer the taste so basically it's an all-round win. Now kale like unlike spinach this is low in oxalates and it contains about 130 milligrams per 100 grams which is again a lot of kale that's basically half this bag so you're not going to eat all of that but it's a good source because that calcium is going to get absorbed. And kale, I hear you cry, meh, kale, so boring. Honestly, if you put it in the air fryer, it's really, really good, assuming you have an air fryer. So tiny bit of oil, tiny bit of salt, air fry at 200 degrees for about five minutes and you get really nice crispy kale. It's good with sort of stir fries. It's good with curries. And if you don't have an air fryer, you can do it on a baking sheet in the oven as well. Just keep an eye on it because it's quite easy to burn. Now, other green veg that have a good source of calcium, well, that includes collard greens, bok choy, broccoli, and okra. And finally, I sprinkled on some sesame seeds. They're a really good source, around 680 milligrams per 100 grams of sesame seeds. Again, a lot of sesame seeds. But a small sprinkle just adds a little bit more. And obviously, tahini, that's a really good source as well. And adding all that together, the meal was about 500 milligrams of calcium. So on day two, we had some pasta. Now, I personally prefer lentil pasta. My husband prefers wholemeal and I was feeling kind, so we had that. And we had it with some salmon, a little lemon zest and juice, some green beans, some toasted pine nuts, 
some parmesan and a side salad containing a little rocket or arugula which just happens to be another good calcium source as well. Now when it comes to cheese well hard cheese wins against soft in the calcium battle and top of the tree well that goes to parmesan and that has a whopping 1025 milligrams of calcium per 100 grams making it the highest calcium containing food on this list and halloumi and cheddar they're also good as well. However you do only eat a small amount and this meal wasn't so high I calculated that it had about 170 milligrams. So my totals for day one including dinner, lunch and breakfast it was 1393 milligrams of calcium which is a little bit more than I needed but nothing crazy. And on day two my intake was a bit lower at 785 milligrams but I had that post-workout protein shake and that took it to over a thousand. So in this video we've gone through 10 really good sources of calcium milk greek yogurt hard cheese particularly parmesan kale tinned mackerel or sardines apricot almonds sesame chia seeds tofu and edamame beans and if i've missed anything you particularly enjoy let me know in the comments below i'll leave a video here about weighted vests and if they really are good for bone health or not and i'll see you there